Jeff from Two Hacks Garage. Well, as you see, we're about ready to fire up this 1970 Chevy LT1350 small block. But in this video, we're not gonna actually do that. We're gonna discuss the actual run stand. I know you guys have seen it in the past, but I really wanna go in detail of what we did, why we did it, and how it works. And also go into some of the tools we use when we break in these engines. So obviously, we originally built this when we built my big black Ford. That's kind of like the size of it. But when we decided to build this, we wanted to make it universal for any engine application. Um, it's a simple design. The whole theory behind this is, is to pretty much replicate an engine bay. You got your radiator, you got a starter, you got all that type of stuff. So this is just what we use to throw an engine on. We'll break in a camshaft, we'll run it, we'll start it to make sure everything's fine, no leaks, it holds good oil pressure, you name it. So with that guys, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna show you what we did, why, and why also all that stuff matters. See you in a few. <clears throat> all right, just like another car, this thing does have gauges. We're gonna start off simple. We're gonna kind of show you that portion of it. So with this, we have what I consider would be the most important gauges. You have your tack, that's important to break in your cam. You have your oil pressure gauge, that's obviously extremely important. And over here, you have your water temp, that's also important. With this here, this here, that actually controls the fan, which is the cooling fan for that right there. We have an ignition switch on and on with everything, and this is actually being wired up right now for the electric water pump, which I'll explain in a minute. So you have your gauges, oh, and you have your push button start. So just like a car, you have your gauges that you need to make sure everything is cool, calm, and collective, and you can run this vehicle without having to worry, and if something happens, you're able to see it right there. So with that, this does have a master kill switch with it. It's got a four type solenoid and that solenoid right there is wired up just like any other vehicle. Um, heavy duty battery, which we do have to charge because this does not have the capability to charge anything. Obviously a radiator, it's a three core aluminum. It works great for small blocks. In my opinion, we probably should have gone a little bit better than big blocks. So with that, the wiring off this, as you can see, it goes down from that solenoid to the starter. We jumped it, so when you hit the button, boom, it just lights right off. Um, this does have an electric fuel pump, and the reason we did that is that the ease of it, just in case somebody doesn't have a mechanical pump with their system, we can hook it right up. Uh, that is self-regulated, which is important so you don't overfill the bowls. Now, talk about cooling. As you can see here, like a normal radiator, it's got your ports on there but every engine is different. So we have different hose pieces that we can combine for different configurations. Yes, it might not look the best. You know what, it works. This isn't about appearance, this is about functionality. Also, if you notice here, that right there is an electric water pump for a small block Chevy. Jimmy and I do a lot of small block Chevys and that right there is a game changer. With that, we don't have to worry about pulleys, belts, or anything like that. We just slap that on there and we know it's gonna flow water and it's a lot quicker. So right there, guys, that's kind of an ease of maintenance thing that we saw, and it really works quite well. Okay, so now, this carburetor, this is ours. This ignition, this is ours. Like I said, we do a lot of small block Chevy stuff. This is a known working carburetor, which is very important when you go to break in an engine. You want this thing to have fuel, you want it to work right, so nothing goes wrong during the break-in procedure. Uh, this one here just happens to be a regular Edelbrock AVS2. And one thing guys, yes, it does have an electric pump, but I do fill the bowls on this previously to doing anything. I don't prime it electrically. And in fact, when we put a mechanical pump on something, we don't prime it that way. We actually prime the bowls on this just to check for leaks. Ignition, well, it's pretty simple. It's an Excel high energy HEI. Very easy to hook up, built in coil, provides more than enough spark and the nice part about it is it's two wires, power and tack. So it's easy to hook up with your power switch over there and your tack. Very simple, it works. Again, it's about functionality. So on to the next part about this. Yes, we do have a catch can for coolant on there. Sometimes we will run actual coolant and a lot of times we just run water on this. Now, if you look here, if I can get a good picture, you see this right there? That's adjustable to go to your engine uh, right there for your engine mounts. Same thing with this. That actually slides back and forth. 
So that's how you mount it with any engine right there. You got to have mounts. We make our own. It's solid mount. So you just get your height, your distance, and your mount, and you set it up. Here's the cool part. Come back here and take a look. If you look here, this is an engine stand head, right? Basically, this is one solid piece. You take it off the stand, you put your flywheel on, bolt this back on, and you slide it back on, and you lock it into place. It's real simple. It's real easy to do. And the nice part about it is, if we need to pull this off, we can take this and put it directly on the engine stand. Another step of efficiency. Right there, that's obviously our gas can. I believe it's a three gallon can and we actually keep it full. It is vented. Um, we do have a manual shutoff valve for it. That way we can shut fuel off, keep it clean just in case something happens. Um, no 87 piss water in this. It's 93 octane or higher. We want good fuel on this, good fresh fuel too. All right, obviously it's on heavy duty casters. This thing travels well. You can actually put this in a trailer, strap it down, take it somewhere else and go. Well, our exhaust. Like I said, we do a lot of small block Chevy stuff. They're just regular small block Chevy mufflers or uh, headers into mufflers to keep it quiet. Well, I made a modification to it today because I like noise. So what I did just for fun, not a necessity, is I put some dumps on it. Uncork those things to actually hear what this thing sounds like with open headers. So yeah, that's the engine run stand. It's nothing crazy. Yes, it does look pretty nice, but it's not about appearance, it's about functionality. I'm not worried about making this thing look all pretty and all that for the camera. What we're doing is we're making it efficient, we're making it functional. That way we can easily get this on there and get everything ready to go. Uh, real quick guys, what you did see in a video before, I'm gonna explain some tools. We do oil prime these engines before we fire them up. We have a tool you put down in the distributor hole that hooks up to the oil pump. You crank it over and you watch your oil PSI gauge. Not only you can see kind of where you're gonna be at oil pressure, but also with that is you know oil has been cycled through this. So on the initial startup, there is no metal to metal. Speaking of tools, let's go check those out. All right, so speaking of tools that we had talked about with that run stand, oh, by the way, real quick, that engine run stand to hook everything up and get everything going, is about a four to five hour job to make sure you're doing it right. I know that sounds like a lot of time, but you wanna be very meticulous. You spend a lot of time, a lot of money on building an engine, you might as well make sure everything's right before you hit that start button. So what do we have in here in this uh, fancy dancy old decaled up toolbox I bought for two bucks at a garage sale and added some neat stickers? Well, let me show you. Just various tools that you're gonna need, and you might not use them all, but they do come in handy. One of the things is, we're gonna talk about safety first. Fire extinguisher, obviously you need one of those. Now, the next thing is to fill fuel bowls, is I buy these little condiment dispensers from like a dollar store, fill them up with gas, squirt them down in there, works very well. You're gonna need a little funnel for that too. So that's how I fill the fuel bowls. Um, just to, uh, if you've got any electrical things going on, uh, it's always important to have a digital multimeter. Check for voltage, check for anything like that. Here's a handy dandy tool. This here is a portable digital tachometer. If something was happening to that tack or something wasn't reading right, you know, someone gives you a distributor, it's not 100%. Well, this here, you put a little strip of tape on the wheel that comes with this kit, on the, or sorry, on the harmonic balancer, hit it. It's gonna tell you how many RPMs it's turning. It's always good to have a backup. I really do like this. Uh, the other thing, well, if something goes wrong and you don't know what's happening and something fails, well, you got a compression tester. This we've never had to use, knock on wood, hopefully never have to use it. Engine priming tool. Basically what this is, is like a distributor shaft. In fact, the one I used earlier, Jimmy made, I have an old distributor. This, you take the distributor out, you drop this down, it engages with the oil pump, you spin it with the drill. That pushes oil through all the passages, gets it in the oil, or in the oil filter, you're ready to rock and roll. Now, I'm not a doctor, but guess what? I have a stethoscope. It's called a mechanics stethoscope. It's a pretty neat tool. Um, basically, if, if, if you hear something, you can do this like a doctor, poke around, get a better chance. This is a solid lifter engine, so if something's really tapping, I can go down the valve covers and get a better judgment of which ones are tapping and which ones aren't. I know that sounds funny, I know it sounds a little weird, but that really does help out quite a bit. 
uh, vacuum gauge. Now, this vacuum gauge, if you're going to tune a carburetor on this and you're going to leave it at your carburetor, you can do that with this to get a good initial tune on it. Don't use this a whole lot unless we have to, but it's always a good idea to have one. Another good tool to have. Maybe something's missing. Maybe you don't know what's going on. Well, this here is a spark tester. It goes in line between your actual spark plug wire to the distributor and the spark plug. If it's firing, you got light. If it doesn't, well, you don't have any spark. Obviously a screwdriver. That's to set your throttle screws, adjust all that, and get it going. You notice we don't have a throttle. We don't actually use that. We actually use a throttle blade screw and turn it and keep it at 2,000 RPMs and let it sit there. Whack the throttle a few times when we need to, and then we back it off to see how it idles. We do not actually use a throttle. This is a lot more precise and easier on the engine when you go to break it in. Well, this here is a wrench, half inch, nine sixteenths. The reason I have this one is a lot of small block Chevys with the distributor hole down in the back and some of the other bolts on here that might come loose, like a water neck or whatever, two sizes. I have them right here, keep it in my pocket. I can quickly tighten up what I need to or loosen up what I need to. Well, temp sensor gauge right here. If you notice in videos, when we're breaking these in, Jimmy and I walk down each header tube. We're looking at temperatures. If one's real cold, you might have a problem. If one's real hot, you definitely have a problem. So basically what this does is we go around and we're trying to see if they're in an accept acceptable range and they're all pretty much consistent. This is a very important tool. Also, you can hit different areas of the engine to see what the actual temperatures are. We've used these quite a bit and found out in some cases, gauges aren't always actually 100% correct. Well, last but not least, I guess, yep, you guessed it, a timing light. When you build an engine, initially, when you put it in, you're not gonna exactly know where the timing is when you drop that distributor. Jimmy and I know just from building engines and all that and his millions of years of experience and all the thousands of engines he built, he knows where to kind of put that to get it fired. If you notice, we're turning that thing, we're listening by ear to see where it's happy. From there, we'll actually check the timing and we'll set it, we'll break it in, we'll go from there. Now, what we'll end up doing is, after a shutoff, we'll fire it back up, we'll advance the timing a little bit, see how happy it gets before it starts kicking back on the starter. I know a lot of guys do that on the car, but if you start doing it on the run stand, you can kind of get a baseline of where you need to be and where you don't need to be. You can do a lot of tuning on this, even though it's not a dyno. We're learning more about it. I'm learning a whole lot more about that piece. But I tell you what, guys, this thing here is like its own science lab. I'm glad we built it. Jimmy and I had some plans. He did a majority of the work, but I tell you what, we put our heads together and made it work. We're still continually improving, like I said, with cooling system, two different style fuel systems we can have off there with one pump. And overall, you know what? I've been pretty happy about it. So what happens when we're done with one of these engines? Well, we don't let a whole lot of people just take that whole cart and go until they put their engine in. So this is what we use. We have a handful of these. It's an engine dolly. And this engine dolly, this one's for a small block Chevy. You drop it on there, you bolt it, it's solid, put it in the back of a truck, put in a trailer and go. We do let people use these when they go to take their engine. We always get them back. Our science lab, not so much. We actually need to use that. Um, one other quick thing on that, guys, that I, I, I guess I kind of forgot to mention, that does have a uh, flex plate on the back, and we do keep that with this engine. Like I said, a lot of small block Chevys. The parts we use, we know they're balanced, we know they're good, we know it's not going to hurt anything. reason we have a lot of those parts, not everyone is always going to bring you parts, and in some cases they bring you parts that don't work. So all the bolt-ons, all those little additions, Jimmy and I have a stockpile of that, yes, Sometimes we're getting newer ones and better ones, but for what it is we have now, it works very well. We know what we have, we're bolting on that engine, it's gonna work. So when we fire up this engine, our process is in place, being very meticulous, always work in a pair. He knows what I'm doing, I know what he's doing. So when we fire this thing up, it goes up out of hitch, it breaks in a cam, it sounds mean. We can get another customer going down the road, not only two hack style, but powered by Jimmy style. Hope you learned something with that, guys. Don't be afraid to build one of those. And if you got any questions, 2xgarage at gmail.com. See you soon. Real quick before I go, I didn't show you the setup of what we do when we're actually ready to fire. Well, usually have it right outside the door of his shop. 
Today, we're gonna kind of keep it in the shade. Reason being, fumes, in case something happens and has a fire, we can't get it out immediately. Knock on wood, that doesn't happen. It's outside, we can roll it away. Hopefully not get burned or ruin anything. Uh, what we'll do is we'll set up a little table like this with our tools handy, ready to go. It's right in proximity of the machine. Um, and a lot of times what we do also is we'll have like a fan like this blow a lot more cool air on it, sometimes put it right on the radiator. Hot day like this, you don't want these things to overheat or even give it the chance. So yeah, that's kind of the way we set up. Uh, a lot of times, you know, what'll happen is, is, you know, we get everything going, we'll give it a once over real quick, make sure everything's primed to make sure everything's ready to go. Fire this thing off, listen to it, set the RPM and go from there. If you notice in previous videos, when we do that, we are not walking away. We are going over everything. We're checking for leaks. We're checking for weeps. We're checking for odd noises, shakes, funny sounds coming from whatever. You wanna make sure you're focused completely on this. Go around it multiple times, check temperatures in various locations, and really do your due diligence to make sure that your brand new engine that you just built, spent a lot of time and money on, is gonna survive this break-in. So after that, what do we do? Well, we kind of clean up our mess, let this thing cool down. A lot of cases, whoever we build it for, they'll come over, they'll hear it run, give us a thumbs up. They like the sound of the rowdiness. And that's why we added those header dumps on there. During break-in process, you want this quiet so you can hear things. But for fun, because I like noise and I consider the sound of horsepower the best music in the world, uncork those. It's kind of a little treat, not necessary, but it sure is fun. So again, it's just a follow up to what we had going on or what I just told you about the tools. Hope you got something out of that. Like I said, if you have any questions related to this, shoot me an email, twohacksgarage at gmail.com. With that guys, waiting for Jimmy to come back. We gotta get cranking on this. We gotta get it fired up. That'll be another video. See you tomorrow.